I'm Dani Leitner and this is SEO in 2024 Additional Insights. Dani, what's your additional insight for SEO in 2024? My insight is focus on building a strong, recognizable brand around a specific topic so people automatically think of you, ensuring that regardless of changing in algorithms, your brand remains a go-to source. Okay, okay. Shall we start off with brand to begin with? How do you build a strong, recognizable brand around a specific topic? Um, yeah, there in there there are actually two things, I would say. Because first thing is building a strong and recognizable brand. We need to think a little bit bigger. And especially with our SEO tasks, we need to think more strategic. So it's not just about getting this keyword that has a lot of search volume. We always have to think... Does it really help us building a brand, what we are doing? Or is it just about chasing the next keyword with high search volume? And how do you measure that? Is it it about um, being strategic with your content planning process and then ensuring that um, what you're intending to write um, fits in nicely within your intended um, communication structure in relation to your brand? Yeah, exactly. So you need to always question what you're doing with SEO and not look at SEO like a silent thing that you're doing and also have a little bit of idea. It's all, Sometimes it's hard for us because we're just looking at the SEO topic of a client, but we should also have in mind what is he doing in social media? What are they doing in PR? So to have a little bit of bigger picture and see how this can actually help us with SEO and help the brand. So if we make blog posts, we also should communicate like, can you post it on social media? Can you get it out there? And not just think of, yeah, now we're here with the rankings, but think a little bit bigger with every strategy we're doing. Got you. Okay. So in terms of your content planning process, then perhaps you'd come up with the ideation of possibilities, and then you take that to other marketing teams, including social media, including brand people, and then make a final selection of what to write about based upon the overall consensus. Exactly. And not just look at keywords, but also like have in mind like, okay, we have the keywords, we have the newsletter, we have the social media. Where can this shine additional to rankings on Google? And also for the, like a lot of effort should also go into the service pages, the product pages. Are they understandable? Is our customer understanding it? Could we post that on social media and would reach as well an audience or something. So think a little bit bigger and try to also educate our clients because sometimes they just think, yeah, you're not just there for SEO, but we can use this content and everything we do for a lot more things. But what happens if SEOs identify a lovely keyword phrase that hasn't got much competition, that has the potential of bringing in a thousand organic visits a month, but social teams or brand teams aren't on board with it? Should they still fight for it? Depends if the keyword helps the brand. But, 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 but so, yeah, the brand people argue, it, look, it's not going to help the brand as much as this keyword phrase, which only brings in 10 visits a month. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends a little bit on the topic. If it's a keyword that's like you say, yeah, it's broadly related to the business of the client or the business of the brand, then maybe we should think a little bit more, okay, maybe we should focus more on something that's closer to the topic because that brings us also a little bit to the specific topic thing. But if it's like, say, yeah, okay, it might not be interesting for social media, the brand people have some strange idea of what the brand is about, but it's actually the topic the website is about, then we should definitely go for it and frame it a little bit. Yeah, that's what we're doing now for SEO. Are there any trends in terms of the style of content that you prefer to publish nowadays? That's a hard question. I still like on website to have text. I know there is a lot of UX designers out there that say like nobody is reading anymore and you shouldn't have too much text. But I still think if you write something that's written interesting, that's actually resonating with the audience and they come to your website, they are still in a mindset of reading. Because you don't go on the website to see a YouTube video, you go on YouTube to see a YouTube video. You go on Instagram to see pictures, but on a website, we still have the mindset we want to read something. It's different than writing a book, but you still need text on a website, also for Google or for algorithm 
but also for the what people are looking for on a website is mostly text. So if you've produced a related video, are you not a fan of embedding a YouTube video on a web page? No, I would definitely embed it to have like more different things and different ways. But I wouldn't just have the YouTube video on a web page without any text. There should be also if someone like if I, for example, read through a blog post and there is a video and I'm reading it on the public transport, I might not watch the video because I'm not there to listen to something. I don't have my headphones on. I don't want everyone to see what I'm listening to. So I would still be reading. So you need a little bit of mix, not just focus maybe on text because somebody might love to see the video, but not just on video either. So have like a mix of it. If it's a blog post, if it's like a product page and everything, you should also have text. And I think it should be a little bit of a mix and not just one thing, but still text. So something else you say is that it's important to ensure that people remember your brand after reading your content. Is there anything that you do to try to ensure that um, once people land on your site, land on a blog post, some other page on your website, that they'll be more likely to remember your brand in the future? Um, a good thing is that you have enough content and enough stuff on your website that people stay a little bit longer and not just go back. So you, they actually see the logo, they see the brand. To have also your own kind of voice, not just writing like if you do it with ChatGPT and everyone is doing it with ChatGPT and everyone sounds the same, they won't remember you. So have your style, try to have a different style. Like maybe you're really direct, you're writing. In German, it's a big thing to write with like uh, the C we call or the do. So we say like you or we say like a uh, higher thing. So we're more distant. So really be consistent with that in your style and everything. And also to build a brand, of course, it's not, normally it's not one impact you get from a user and then they will remember you. Normally it's more impact. And that's also where you have to think a little bit bigger for the brand. They see you in social media. They see you for more search relevant uh, keywords um, and come across your brand. And there is a strategy that it takes like seven touch points for a client to decide and remember you. So you need to create more touch points. You started off saying initially there the importance of keeping people on your website so they keep on reading other pieces. So does that mean that within an article or perhaps at the bottom of an article, you're a fan of having another call to action to get people to read another piece of content? So that completes this piece of content on this particular topic. However, a, rela a related piece of content is this one here. So you should check out this one now. Is that the kind of call to action that you have within articles? Yeah. You really should do that. For Also for internal link building, it helps a lot. So also Google sees the diff, uh, like, okay, there is something else, something interesting. But of course, for the user, I see a lot of small business sites are doing this after a blog post and suddenly the page ends. You might have the footer, but maybe you don't have much in the footer. And that, even if I read through it as a normal user, I feel lost afterwards. Like, what am I doing next? So it always helps to have some, oh, that might interest you as well for the user as well, for search engines. Is your website always the best place to publish your content? Or are there sometimes better opportunities? I mean, you see people, for instance, writing long form posts on LinkedIn and other places. Can that be a more effective content publishing strategy? Definitely. That's why the tip I give with the building the brand is so general and not just with SEO, because I think there are is content that resonates better on LinkedIn, that resonates better in a video. And sometimes you need to let go of a topic because they say like, okay, maybe the website is not the best place to publish it. So how do you know which is the best place? You know, which is the best place for... i give you a very good example because I had that recently with a relaunch because we were going through a lot of blog posts. And as you have a lot with uh, companies, you post things on your blog post like, we won this award in 2014, in 2015 and stuff like that, which is great brand building content because you actually won an award, an SEO award or something like that, or you went to a conference, to an event, but it's not the right content for your website to write a blog post about it because like I won an award in 2021, in 2024, nobody is interested if you won an award in 2021. But it's perfect for social media because that's what you are 
expecting in social media, you want to see these things, what is going on at this moment from the brand. And it's getting a lot of push in the moment because social media is something where you need to publish and then it gets a lot of attraction at the moment. But in one year, it might be forgotten. And that's the perfect topic for social media, but not for your business blog. So going on a bit of a tangent, are you a fan of recycling content on social media, publishing the same thing after a year and after another year? Yes, I think that's a really, I mean, with the award from 2021, I might, it might not make sense. But if you have something that's working, I actually think it's helping a lot to republish it. Like even some things you can republish every two months, every three months, because not everybody saw what you published because the algorithm is really selective and people are forgetting really fast on social media because everything is going so fast and you're reading through it. LinkedIn goes a little bit longer because there it can be like in four days, somebody is still seeing a post you made four days ago, but in Instagram, it's dead after four days. So you can actually really repost stuff. So when you talk about building a strong, memorable brand as a result of the content you publish, how do you measure the SEO value of this? That's a good question. I started measuring brand keywords. I know with SEO, a lot of times we say like, yeah, we are not measuring the brand keywords because we're not actively working on them. And it's not just organic search because people are always looking for you. So it's not so much important what position you have, but still, if you track the brand keywords, and see, hey, there is more search volume coming from the brand's keywords. They are searched more, especially if you see the trend of a brand keyword. Or some things like last week I was looking for something in the health sector, for example, in Spanish. And in Spain, there is a really good blog about health and training and everything. And I saw the results and I was like, yeah, this blog is not there. So I added to my keyword the blog name because I wanted to read on this blog. And if you start getting keywords like this, you see like people are actually looking for your site. So your brand is growing. So we should really have a look on the brand keywords to see like if the brand gets more recognized and more searched for. But how do you know what your content marketing activities that resulted in the brand's uplift? You can never 100% know, but I think if you're doing a lot of SEO and your brand is growing and you know a little bit what's going on in the rest of the social media and everything, you can say if it's helping. If you do a lot of SEO, it's helping. That's what happens because you get recognized, you get founded. You can't really say like it was just the content that helped growing the brand, of course. What I really like to do is show both. Like these are your brand searches, that these are the clicks and the impressions you get from brand. And this is what you get from just organic, from people that might not have known you before. So show both of them. And if there is a relation that both are growing, it might be a relationship between them. What's your view on AI generated content? I think people get it wrong sometimes because they think you go to ChatGPT and say, write me an article about SEO tips and what you get there, you put on your website, but that's not how it works. You can use ChatGPT, Gemini and everything to help getting things done faster and to get some ideas and something. What I really like to do, I do a lot of research for my articles. I write down everything I find in the internet and then Everything after like 10 hours of research, I give it to ChatGPT and tell me, what do you think about the content and ask him questions? What can I get out of it? And maybe write some parts of an article or especially correcting, especially if I write something in English, I give it to him again to say like, hey, could you make it a little bit more fluent a little because it's not my main language. So it's a little bit harder for me to write so I can actually make it sound better. But the topic or the input I give him is the most important thing. If I give him a lot of input, good input, the outcome will be completely different from asking him, write me an article about that. You've shared what SEO should be doing in 2024. So now let's talk about what SEO shouldn't be doing. So what's something that's seductive in terms of time, but ultimately counterproductive? What's something that SEOs shouldn't be doing in 2024? I think 
we talked now about a lot about thinking about the big picture, about the brand keyword. But I think what we still need to stop doing is link building. Because if we think of link building as link building, we just do it completely wrong. It should be called digital PR to build a brand, to build authority. And we want to use it to appear in relevant content and in front of relevant uh, communities and audiences. And if we get in this effort a two-fold link from a high quality authority side, we won't say no, but that shouldn't be the focus. And I think the problem is here, we SEOs can't do digital PR alone. Because if I think of my brand, my digital PR is writing an article for different really important sites for the SEO niche, but the article needs to come from me or what we are doing here. That would, that's what I would call digital PR. We make a podcast, we talk, but I need to do it. So I can't do that for my clients because they need to show up. So that's something we can't do as a silo and just sell. We will make you 10 links. We will need to put there a lot of a different perspective, like we should do something to get your brand out there, but it needs your work as well. So would it be fair to say that digital PR type links should be the majority of your link building efforts? But there are probably a, a few link types that you can still seek to obtain. Yeah, so I think digital PR should be mainly about that. Then, of course, there are other links you could get like from, oh, you're already mentioned somewhere. So that would be a really nice thing. That's something we SEOs can do. Like, hey, I saw your brand got mentioned there. Should I ask for a link? So it's actually something we already get mentioned, but we can get an additional thing out of it. So that's a really nice thing. Or really typically it's tools we use and do some testimonials for them. That's also a link where it's not so much getting in front of the brand, but maybe just more show like, okay, that's a tool that's relevant for my niche and there I can get a link. Things like that, but not just do guest articles just for the link and for the, yeah, for getting a guest article on sometimes sites that are not the main focus of the brand or not so necessary, but we promised the link, so we need to give it to the client. Danny Leitner is an independent SEO consultant and you can find her over at dannyleitner.ch. Danny, thanks so much for adding your additional insight to SEO in 2024. Thank you for inviting me. I've been your host, David Bain. You've been listening to an episode of SEO in 2024 Additional Insights, a majestic series that complements the original SEO in 2024 podcast, video series and book. Find out more at seoin2024.com. SEO in 2024.